is the party over? There was no party, it, was a, it is a market. I'm sorry, party is not over because there was no party. Hello and welcome to your weekly news dump. My name is Artem, I'm CEO of Accord Properties and this is your weekly news talking about real estate and economics of Dubai and anything else that I found interesting this week. Please like, subscribe and press the bell icon. Let's get into the news. So what happened this week? This week was rough. I'll be, I'll be honest, I barely slept. Extremely stressful. I have to chase uh, someone to make our commission payment. Um, so that is rough and that is not great. Unfortunately, due to legal reasons, I cannot name them because local laws are funny that way, but I'll just say that we're nearly half a year out of payment date and I'm running out of options anyway. Anyway, that's as always extremely stressful and it's a huge and it's pretty big deal money wise so it's a big chunk of our budget but otherwise i still hate my car ram trucks suck servicing and dealer services suck can't wait to get something else simple as that otherwise we're starting to get up to speed with the new director starting to identify a lot of growth opportunities um, we soon going to be establishing our rental department as well. So we will be doing long-term rent, which we usually would offload to trust partners. Now we would do it in a full in-house, fully manually, which is great. Otherwise, I mean, we did some streams this week and last week and a lot of you watched the stream last week. No, I mean, last week, not a lot of you watched the stream, but this week, a lot of people did watch the stream, and it's actually a really good one. I do I do appreciate the, the viewers, and uh, tune in, we try and do something every week. And live streams is the best time where you can interact with us, you can ask questions, you don't need to leave your contact details if you're wary of that, you can just talk in chat live with me, and ask questions before you even commit to working with any agency. I think it's important for a lot of people and I think that's a good thing to do. Otherwise, really what this week was mostly tough, frustrating and sleep deprived for me, but I guess that means it's been productive mostly. I should stop skipping gym. Obviously I should stop skipping gym, look at me. I'm not in my best physical form ever, but that will come once the company is functioning to the standard I want it to function, not to the standard others find it find okay. We strive to be the best, we strive to have perfect, perfect quality rates and perfect service quality for our customers, and until I can say that there's at least 99% satisfaction with our customers, so I'm not slowing down. But that's beyond the point, let's get into the real news. So let's start with actual real estate things. So Dubai real estate property market hits a nine-year high, which is essentially all-time high. We have beaten this year the average price for per square foot compared to 2014, which was the previous peak. So when I'm saying we reached a new peak of price, house prices for Dubai, for people who don't look too deep into that, what that means, it means that, oh, it's downhill from now. In my mind, that's very, very a primitive way to look at things because first of all the average quality and the average product value of property have risen dramatically in Dubai since 2014. In 2014 you had Marina. Marina sucks. 
Now you have downtown, you have Creek, you have Blue Waters, you have Palm, right? You have all those new developments which are amazing and absolutely next level quality compared to what was delivered in 2014. That's the first point. The second point is the services and the value of living in Dubai has increased significantly. The quality of life here, the quality of financial sector services, the quality of uh, entertainment industry, the quality of employment market and the talent pool here increased dramatically since 2014. It's not even a fair comparison anymore. And that is very important to understand that 2014 Dubai and 2023 Dubai are not the same city. Not at all. So a lot, of, a lot more highly paid employees are now coming to Dubai. There's much more of a hiring drive for highly, highly skilled, world-class, highly qualified employees here. And just the general population of Dubai is rising very sharply with huge demand for both rental and for purchasing the, the homes for personal use. So that drives up the demand and prices and they should not even be at 2014 level. 2014 level means it's severely underpriced. I believe we're about halfway through to a third way through the up curve. So we have a solid four to five years of growth in the market easily. And then I don't believe the market gonna crash. I believe it's gonna plateau for at least a while. So your investments should be reliable within next four to eight years, which is, I believe is great planning horizon for real estate. I don't believe you should be in the same property for more than five years anyway. But I'm a broker, I'm interested in people flipping them more, so what do I know? The other thing which you need to consider is, now it's at an all-time all high again. So people who bought it in 2014 and seen it crush, right? If they held, held on to their properties for those 10 years, now they're making a profit. They made rental profit, a significant one, on them, and now they're exiting the market at more money than they entered the market, with more purchasing power than they exited the market. So that again, and I gonna bet your money, I gonna bet my money, I gonna bet anybody's really m money on a thing that whatever return rate was for people who bought the property at 2014, so at the previous peak of the market to now, if they will sell it tomorrow, they still made more return on their investment than, uh, than they would in any bank or more than enough to cover the inflation. Because you'll see a lot of news saying, right? Um, oh, it's a new peak. Is the party over? There was no party. It, was a, it is a market. I'm sorry, party is not over because there was no party. It's just normal market correction, fairly fast growth, but given the speed of growth of UAE as economy, socially, population-wise, it can't be even considered a boom. It's just fairly fast-paced correction, simple as that. So that's very encouraging news. Uh, great to read it. Uh, you can read more in-depth opinions from Arabian Business in the article attached. On to the next news. Next to the news, what have I missed this week? And I regret it. Icons of Porsche Festival. Porsche is a great brand, absolutely love their cars. Had a chance to drive 911, had a chance to drive Porsche Cayenne. Porsche Cayenne is just Audi A8 with decent steering or A6 or what, or Q. Anyway, it's an Audi, but with better steering. That's all it is. Nothing impressive, but I did drive 911, the last naturally aspirated generation out of normal ones. Enjoyed it thoroughly. I just enjoy their cars. I enjoy their approach to branding. I enjoy their approach to styling. Would I own a Porsche? Um, I don't know. I simply don't know. 
Uh, they feel too controlled to me. I like a sports car to try and kill me when I drive it. So I probably would go for something a bit more Italian or heavily modified or just altogether unhinged, right? But I appreciate their design language. I appreciate the brand that I should have visited. I did not. I absolutely hate that I had to miss out on that. Oh, I looked back because our lights are going out, but what can I do? Battery is out. Lights are out this week. Once again, I love that Dubai does those events and promotes those events and usually spawns, government of Dubai would sponsor those events a lot to attract them to the area. So that drives tourism, that drives the city life, that drives the city economy. Um, once again, the serious reason for me including that is to see, look, the working hard to be culturally relevant and to be economically relevant and to be... Uh, art relevant and that's also very important so good on them shame on me for missing out on to the next news so here's some negative news for you about dubai's real estate only makes sense because um i only do positive because they're they are overwhelmingly positive and don't forget, I got a real estate agency to run. I got vested interest, all right? What would you expect? Anyway, nearly 200 homeowners denied parking due to safety concerns. What happened is uh, one of the smaller, lesser quality developers who sells really cheap stuff, like really, really suspiciously cheap stuff, right? Um, had their building built to such a low standard that it's now dangerous to use parking facilities. That is absolutely not great. So community is now a ghost town because you cannot rent out a place there without renting out a place with a parking spot. Simply because it's one of those communities where you need a car to commute to central Dubai, where your office will be. There was a government commission which identified the flaws and requested immediate uh, fixes to that, and they are apparently happening. They should be happening, obviously, but for me, it doesn't even make sense why the developer shouldn't be able, shouldn't have to refund every single one of those homeowners. Should be refunded, and not at the purchase value, at the current market value. Well, actually, no. At whichever is higher, because I assume current market value on this building is quickly approaching zero. That's why you need a broker. We as brokers, we deal with those buildings all the time. We go and we see apartments, we see the buildings, we see the areas. We are there every day, all day. What that means is we know exactly what the quality issues with what developers are. Why are they there? There are less scrupulous uh, brokers who not be named, but who would sell from those developers very actively because when I'm selling you, let's say, let's name somebody with great quality. MR is usually great. I absolutely love MR. I know some people who online mentioned that they have grievances with them. I yet to meet anybody in person who had issue and we sold a lot with MR and in MR buildings, both on primary and secondary market, and we yet to have any issues. With them, they, when you're selling their off plan, they offer you 2% commission. That's all they're gonna pay you. Two and a half percent if it's not selling too well, if it's not too hot, right? Uh, those developers would offer you somewhere around 7%. They would offer you 7% commission versus 25 So obviously there's a huge motivation for you monetarily to sell those buildings and sell those developments. But at the end of the day, if you're only planning to do your business for a year or two, maybe it works. But in my mind, if you want to have clients for a while, if you want to have clients who are 
interested in coming back to you and working with you long term and who are serious investors. You cannot go and do that to them. You're better off selling for lesser commission but establishing a relationship with a customer and establishing trust, right? And people are smart. You cannot just fool them into buying something of inferior quality and expect them to be happy with you. It's just never going to happen. Nobody's that foolish. But yeah, those things happen in Dubai's market and those are the issues which require help of professionals. That's why you need your broker and what, that's why you need long-term relationship so you can deal with developer if that arises. And more importantly, you need a trusted broker so that issue never arises in the first place. This is very important to understand that although there are a fair number of protections on Dubai's market in the real estate, it is not at the same level as, let's say, European real estate protection-wise and legal protection-wise and government oversight-wise. So, honestly, things here can be great and things that here can be done well, but they require expertise and they require right, correct partners and correct partnerships. I know I'm scaring a lot of people off right now from buying anything here, but I'm not saying that it is increasingly dangerous, but what I'm saying is find right people, that's the key. That's the key here to success in your real estate investment is finding the right people. You may be thinking you found the right development, but I don't think that necessarily is always true. Find the right broker and work with that broker to find the right development. On to the next news. Dubai real estate, when is the best time to buy property, experts reveal. So this is a very long read. Um, see it in the description. We always attach the links and sources for you to read along. Uh, but the short answer here, if you're end user, the best time for you to buy a property is whenever you need a property and whenever you are well equipped to buy a property. Market comes secondary because you're buying it as end user and you're buying a product of property. If you're an investor, the best indicators, as we can see from this article, are rents growing faster when the house price is growing. That means we're still far off because when rents start curving down, house price is gonna soon follow, but they always lag behind rentals because rental transactions are much quicker, much simpler, much lesser commitment. So rent market is always quicker to react than real estate sales market. So if you own property in Dubai or plan to own, don't check the prices for properties, check the prices on rent. Start there and work your way back to the prices of your property, right? Um, with other indicators, look, simply demand. Simply look at the demand. There is huge rental demand right now due to a lot of expats moving. There is massive purchase demand due to investors coming in and you are having great financial economy so people who establish in UAE financial markets tend to also buy properties there because they benefit greatly your ability to establish in UAE for tax reasons and for a number of other reasons and simply there's great offering of the properties there's a lot of high net worth individuals coming in because there is very few places in the world which offer same kind of level of luxury as some of the communities and developments in Dubai. And all this still drives demand highly. So when is the best time to buy property? Which property and for whom is the 
following question. So I would follow that question with a question and they do as well. But there is a lot of discussion there and there is a lot of specialists discussing different approaches you can have. So I highly recommend to actually read this one because I'm not going to spend an hour reading the article to you out loud. I recommend you to dive in and read it. Be more aware of the market, especially if you're looking to invest. On to the next news. So we're slowly becoming an automotive channel because the second car related news is Giath, uh, which is Emirati car brand, can now be purchased by individuals. Initially, what Giath was is um, Dubai's and UAE's police car. And it's a pretty cool police car. It, it First of all, it looks cool. It's a big SUV with really ag- kind of aggressive styling. Uh, you've seen the image by now of the new one for sale. <coughs> Let's pull up a police version image. The other cool thing about Ga- police gaff is it's full of cameras. It's, it's there to make police work efficient, right? They're driving by the camera scans all the place around it so whenever let's say a police sees somebody with unfastened seatbelt they don't need to pull you over they don't need to scan your place they don't need to line up with you they just press a couple buttons that's it you got it fine i know it doesn't sound very exciting from the angle of getting a fine but really um as as far as police car goes it's a very reliable police car It's not fully domestically produced all in, but it's mostly based on the Nissan Patrol. The Patrol is the staple for you. It's the most important car here. Also, de facto, the fastest car in the far left lane here at any given time. You can see those cars speeding down the fast lane double the speed limit sometimes i'm not sure where they found the money to pay the fines resulting but some people do um and obviously the patrols super safari version is the perfect car for dune bashing the perfect car so obviously this car has a proven track record and they're based on that car their their own gaff which been adjusted for local markets and their vip version which now available to public so they took a base of Nissan Patrol, put a very large engine in it. It's 5.6, I think, liters engine, a V8, of course. They put luxurious interiors, a lot of tech inside, including infrared cameras, 360 cameras, all the tech, a lot of screens as well. Um, apparently, interior finishes are supposed to be great as well. I haven't seen it in person, but looks exciting. And obviously all the cooling system, everything is modified to the point where it functions perfectly well in in the local climate, in the local heat. And the AC is powerful enough, etc. So I think this is a great competitor to, let's say, getting a Cadillac Escalade, uh, which is one of the go-to for kind of executive large cruisers and executive SUVs here. I think we're going to start seeing them on the road soon. Um, I'm actually excited to see them because, I'll be honest, I love the design. That's a controversial opinion, but I love the design, so that's a great news as well. Okay, so that's all for this week, and thank you for making it all the way through, honestly, a review counts to, for me. Uh, I really appreciate the people who make it all the way through the vi- video. Really helps me. It really helps me with the algorithm. Really helps me to promote my business. Really helps me to reach out to people with what I believe is uh, one of very few sources of credible and honest information about Dubai's life and real estate. And once again, please like subscribe and press the bell icon comment something as well correct me if i'm wrong on something i would love to see you 
telling me how we can make this uh, news dump better. See you next week. <laughs>